People from all across the world come to Dubai to experience luxury. It's a place filled with huge hotels, malls and skyscrapers, like the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Dubai and six other Emirates, including the famous Abu Dhabi, make up what is known as United Arab Emirates, or the UAE for short. But from November 30th to December 12th, thousands of people will also be coming to Dubai for this year's Global Climate Talks, COP28. For many, hosting the Global Climate Talks in Dubai is strange. Since 1966, oil was found in Dubai, and oil has been a huge part of the development of Dubai and the wider UAE. However, the oil industry is notorious for contributing huge amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Those gases help to worsen the climate crisis, and essentially it contributes to global warming and worsening natural disasters like wildfires or flooding. Then, the other strange thing was that the head of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, right here in the UAE, was the COP28 president designate. That is Sultan Ahmed al Jubair, who also heads a renewable energy company, Mastar. Now, he has defended his role as the president or the president designate of COP28 by pointing out that for years he has focused on pushing renewable energy. And according to him, the producers of oil and gas and fossil fuels at large should not be locked out of the conversation on climate change because, of course, they contribute to climate change and should be a crucial part of the efforts at helping to slow the climate crisis. For its part, Ghana believes that oil and gas players, be it companies or countries, should not be locked out of the conversation on climate change. Ghana believes those players are crucial to this conversation, in fact. Now, Ghana is now an oil-producing nation. Since 2019, the country has been producing oil in its prolific Stabroek block offshore. But way before then, Ghana has been protecting its vast intact forests that cover about 85% of the total landmass. That is, forests cover an area the size of England and Scotland combined. And those forests help to trap those very same emissions uh, produced by the oil and gas industry, for example, like carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. So Ghana has been arguing for a very long time that it should be compensated for keeping its forests intact instead of cutting those down to advance mining on, or agricultural activities, for example. Ghana hopes to bring that case here at COP28 and really push for a scheme or push for its scheme to get compensation for its vast forests. Now Ghana is doing that or pushing for that compensation through its carbon credits venture. This is part of Ghana's story. Guyana's model presents an excellent opportunity for the world to learn from and for us to develop a comprehensive strategy where we can uh, all commit uh, towards net zero but not sacrificing the development of countries and development of people. And uh, of course for us, uh, COP28 uh, must take into serious consideration the forests, uh, the role the forests play uh, in, climate, uh, in the climate change equation, ensuring that the prominence of forests and the value of the forests is, uh, is not uh, taken for granted. Ghana's first carbon credits deal was signed in December last year with the Hess Corporation, which interestingly is one of the oil companies in the Stabroek block offshore. Since then, the country has been able to get some amount of payments from the Hess Corporation and it has distributed payments to more than 220 indigenous communities all across Guyana. As per Ghana's developmental plan, the Low Carbon Development Strategy, 15% of all revenues earned through the sale of carbon credits must be distributed directly to indigenous communities. We have spent it in different sectors. We have spent it on youths, education, health. We did some work in our traditional, um, our tradition where we refurbish our Benab. And we also did projects that are income generating. One of them is going to be the storage bond for feed where we will retail feed chicken feed 
and the other is a chicken project, a broilers project. So those are two projects that will be bringing in money to our village. On Friday, Ghana is expected to talk up its LCDS and wider its forest protection plans at COP28 when President Ali addresses the high-level forum where other presidents will be talking. Later in the afternoon, President Ali will also be talking at Guyana's side event which focuses on the low carbon development strategy LCDS and which demonstrates how for the past 15 years or so, Ghana has been able to push its sustainable development by sustainably managing its forests and it hopes to continue doing so even now that it is an oil producer. Reporting for the newsroom from Dubai, I am Fishani Ragabir.